religion plays an important role in our society one such religion is sikhism which is the fifth largest religion in the world as you can see from this map so many people across the globe follow sikhism so let's learn more about this sikhism emerged during the 15th century and who is responsible for it well it was founded by guru nanak dev he was born in 1469 in a district called talwandi which is in present day pakistan his father's name was mehta kalu and that of his mother was tripta even from childhood he was very compassionate and like other boys and girls of his age used to play games outside he did not indulge in that instead he used to take up a corner of his house and meditate for long hours he was not even interested in studies in his school so as we saw guru nanak dev was very compassionate since his childhood well he grew up to become a very important saint and he was inspired by both the philosophies of hinduism as well as the philosophies of islam other than that he was the one to preach about nirguna worship nirguna worship means that you worship a god who is formless nirguna means formless so you cannot visualize your god he preached along with his followers at many different places and his followers came to be known as sikhs in fact guru nanak dev is considered the first sikh guru so as we saw guru nanak was born in talwandi which is in present day pakistan in 1469 to preach about his religion he traveled widely before finally establishing a center at kartarpur which is known as dera baba nanak right beside the river ravi now let's take a look at guru nanak's teachings he emphasized the importance of the worship of one god this means that god is omnipotent which means that god is all powerful omnipresent which means that god is present everywhere and finally omniscient which means that god is knowledgeable of everything in fact he even used terms such as naam daan and isnan for the essence of his teachings so what do these things mean naam means right worship daan means welfare of others and isnan means purity of conduct or the right conduct other than that his teachings are now remembered as naam japna kirt karna and vand chakna which also underline the importance of right believe and worship honest living and helping other people out so from this you can understand exactly how practical guru nanak's teachings are now other than that he also preached that god is nirguna so what is this nirguna nirguna means that god is formless we cannot correctly visualize god because of this there is no concept of idol worshiping present in sikhism as guru nanak rejected idol worshiping if we cannot visualize our god how can we create idols of him right so guru nanak ji rejected idol worshiping next he also rejected complex rituals that were there during that point of time in india and people were really tired of it now during this point of time there was the caste system in hinduism what is this caste system well in this caste system a group of people are considered much more important and they are known as the upper caste now this upper caste used to exploit the people belonging in the lower caste who were considered less important people however guru nanak he rejected this discriminatory caste system as he was of the belief that everyone should be treated equally irrespective of their castes he even said that men and women are equal too so he believed in gender equality and encouraged women to join the order so these were the teachings of guru nanak ven boliya sab ki ch jaan da
well wasn't that beautiful that is known as shabad kirtan that is in fact a form of devotional singing that sikh people do towards their god so his followers would sing hymns to spread the message of nirguna bhakti so his devotees they would gather at buildings which were called dharamshalas now these dharamshalas were later on called gurudwaras which are today the places of worship for the sikh people in fact even in this picture here you can see the interior of a gurudwara and there are several people here some people can also be seen singing and playing musical instruments whereas they are all surrounding the guru granth sahib which is the holy book so they go there to worship so gurudwaras are the places of worship for the sikh people so as we already know that his followers guru nanak's followers are known as sikhs so his followers increased during the 16th century under his successors these people mainly belonged to number of professions but traders agriculturalists artisans craftsmen predominated so there were more of these people this might have to do something with guru nanak's insistence that his followers must be householders and should adopt productive and useful occupations so from this we can see exactly how different his teachings were as compared to other religious leaders teachings right because he did not want his followers to devote all of their time in devotion and in worshiping instead he wanted his followers to be householders and to have useful occupations and productive occupations so that they can give back something to the society so we can understand exactly how practical guru nanak's approach was other than that these these followers they were also expected to contribute to the general funds of the community of followers Now let's take a look at this beautiful painting which was made by William Carpenter in 1854. So this here is actually showing us the interior of the Golden Temple. And as you can see few people here are playing musical instruments and you can also see a book kept on a red cushion. This book in fact is very important. That was the Guru Granth Sahib which is the religious or the holy book of the Sikh people. and this book teaches us about equality and that men and women are also equal and that one should practice kindness compassion and love so can you answer this question what is the holy book of the six is it quran bhagavad gita bible or guru granth sahib the correct answer is guru granth sahib guru granth sahib is the holy book of the sikh people now how did this book come into existence well you see before guru nanak's death in 1539 he appointed one of his followers as his successor his name was lehna but he came to be known as guru angad now to this guru angad compiled guru nanak's compositions and added a few of his own in a new script known as gurmukhi after him his successors he had three successors now these also wrote under the name nanak and all of their compositions were compiled by guru arjan in 1604 after this we get the bhakti movement and the sufi movements in which a lot of religious saints come up with their own important teachings right so even their teachings are included in the guru granth sahib some of these saints were Sheikh Farid, Saint Kabir, Bhagat Namdev, and Guru Tegh Bahadur. Now, in 1706, this compilation was authenticated by Guru Tegh Bahadur's son and successor, Guru Gobind Singh. Finally, it is now known as Guru Granth Sahib, which is the holy scripture of the Sikh people. So, this is how the Guru Granth Sahib came into existence. Now by the 17th century the town of Ramdaspur which is presently known as Amritsar had developed around a central gurudwara called Harmandir Sahib which is known as the golden temple to all and at this point of time India was under the Mughal rule however this place it was virtually self governing 
and modern historians refer to the Sikh community as a state within the state. So the Mughal emperor at that point of time felt threatened by all of this. So when he felt threatened by all of this, what did he do? Well, Mughal emperor Jahangir looked upon them as a potential threat and he ordered the execution of Guru Arjan in 1606. After this, there were repercussions. So this culminated in the institution of Khalsa by Guru Gobind Singh in 1699. And this community of Sikhs are called the Khalsa Pant, which became a political entity. So the Sikh movement finally got politicized in the 17th century with the institution of Khalsa Pant. So we can see Sikh community which started as a religious body later on in the 17th century got a political color to it as well. So we saw how Sikhism was founded by Guru Nanak. He was considered the first Sikh Guru and he had many important teachings. These teachings inspired many people. In fact, approximately 30 million people follow Sikhism today and there are 30 million Sikh people worldwide making it the world's fifth largest religion today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free on deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app and get easy access to more than 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and get a chance to win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.